With just days to go until a big conference on climate change, a huge leak of documents obtained by the BBC shows how countries are trying to change a crucial scientific report on the subject. Now, this is a leak that contains 32,000 submissions made by governments, companies and other interested parties to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The overwhelming majority are positive and constructive, some are not though. Saudi Arabia, Australia, India and Japan are among countries asking the IPC to play down the need for a rapid move away from fossil fuels. Major beef producers Brazil and Argentina are demanding a watering down of evidence that shows that eating less meat can help cut greenhouse gas emissions. While Switzerland and Australia are among wealthier nations pushing back against calls to pay poorer countries to help them reach targets. This leak comes just 10 days before those leaders from around the world are gathering in Glasgow. Our climate editor Justin Rowlett has more. The clock is ticking on tackling climate change. The science says unless we start making dramatic cuts to emissions now, we risk very serious consequences. The world has experienced some of the most extreme weather ever recorded in recent years. Terrible floods in India, while hot, dry weather has sparked vast fires in Australia, as well as in Brazil and Argentina. Yet leaked documents seen by the BBC shows these are among countries pressuring the UN to change its message on the options for tackling climate change. Saudi Arabia, Australia and Japan are arguing the world doesn't need to reduce fossil fuel use as quickly as the UN suggests. The Saudis ask UN scientists to delete a claim that the focus for the energy sector should be actively phasing out fossil fuels. Meanwhile, India warns it expects coal to remain the mainstay of energy production for decades. The leak consists of thousands of comments by governments and others to the scientists responsible for a key UN report. They were given to Greenpeace UK, which passed them on to the BBC. Oh, these UN reports are pretty much the Bible of climate science. They're used by governments to decide how to tackle climate change and they will provide a crucial input to the negotiations in Glasgow. So the way Scientists who've helped compile these reports say the UN science is objective. There is absolutely no pressure on scientists to accept the comments. So if the comments are lobbying, if they're not justified by the science, they will not be integrated in the IPCC reports. The leak comes just days before a crucial climate conference begins in Glasgow. It shows just how tricky the negotiations are likely to be. You know, this is one of the reasons why... But don't give up hope just yet, says a veteran of countless international negotiations. People can see the effects of climate change. And the, the effects of climate change, by the way, on countries like India and China are going to be dramatic. This is all about understanding that even though the challenge is immense, there really isn't an alternative to dealing with it. You've got to go back and redouble your efforts, including with those people who, who still are, are holding out. They're putting the finishing touches to the huge conference facilities in Glasgow. This leak shows just how tough the negotiations there are likely to be. We will discover at the conference whether Despite the lobbying, world leaders are willing to take the ambitious action needed to curb emissions. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News. Live to Delhi now, our correspondent there, Vineet Kare, is there. Vineet, obviously India here asking the IPCC to play down the need for a rapid move away from fossil fuels. How big is India's reliance on coal? So if you look at the top headline, um, if you... So Google Indian coal, you would find that India has uh, the uh, world's fourth uh, largest reserve uh, of coal and uh, is the second largest producer of coal, the second largest uh, uh, consumer of coal. Uh, dependence on the electricity, if you look at coal-fired power plants account for about 54% of India's installed power uh, generation capacity. Uh, it would not be wrong to say that uh, coal is sort of a lifeline for a lot of poor communities, uh, to keep they use coal to keep themselves warm uh, to cook food uh, i was recently reading a report which said that as many as four million people are directly or indirectly um, 
employed in India's uh, coal industry, um, and this coal consumption is only going up because of an expanding middle class. They're buying air conditioners, they're buying refrigerators, so the electricity usage is uh, going up. And India continues to uh, import coal. In fact, there was a coal shortage uh, in parts of India recently, and there was there was talk of um, uh, strategic reserves of uh, imported coals. And uh, and India's coal consumption is, as I said, it continues to rise because of a. Uh, 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 and uh, in, in the coming days, we can, in fact, we can see more uh, new coal mines being open uh, for you. So, uh, a, as I mentioned, the reasons are not too far to find. We've heard that Narendra Modi, though, is planning to go to Glasgow, Vineet. What is he going to say when confronted with these facts? Is he going to make any kind of commitments to try and wean India off coal? I, I doubt, because India's traditional stand has always been that uh, it's the rich countries who are responsible for the pollution that, uh, that we are seeing today, and they should be doing more than expecting India. Uh, to do it. India is slowly moving towards renewable energy, uh, but as I said, coal is still the mainstay of uh, in India's development uh, for the poor. And uh, I am I, I will be surprised because we reached out to the India's to India's environment ministry, and they did not say a word. They said um, uh, that they we should look out to what Prime Minister Narendra Modi say, uh, says. So we should not be second guessing that. But I will be surprised if he says anything uh, sort of of the of India's regular stand on, on the subject. Vineet, thanks for joining us from Delhi.